Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Erica Baker. And I'm Sarah Sartell. This week on SPTV News, a sustainable business speaker is coming to campus. Intramurals for winter, for the winter, are coming soon. Smosh's parent company is shutting down, and the results on the recent election are discussed. All this and more when we return. Keynote speaker Jeremy Bond is coming to campus. Featured as a 2017 GreenBiz 30 Under 30 Emerging Leader in Sustainable Business, Bond serves as the Sustainability Strategy Manor Manager at Interface Amclots, a globally recognized sustainability leader and the world's largest manufacturer of commercial carpet tile. Three and a half years out of his undergraduate degree with a major in environmental science and a minor in sustainable materials and technology. Bond is helping to make Interface a company that positively impacts the communities it touches. Bond cultivates sustainability as part of Interface's company culture through community impact programs, training, and education. Bond will be speaking more about his experiences Friday, November 9th. Contact the Office of Sustainability for a ticket to this event. event. Tickets are free, but spots are limited. The event will take place at 3.15 to 4.30 p.m. in the DUC Theater. The Residence Hall Association will be hosting a brand new event, Turkey Bowling. This involves the classic 10-pin game, but instead of bowling with a ball, participants throw a frozen turkey instead. Anyone who can get three strikes in a row, also known as a turkey, will be awarded a prize. This event will take place on Monday, November 12th from 7 to 8 p.m. in the DUC Land Room. This event is free and open to all. A peer support group is being held on campus for those who wish to share their experiences with fellow students. It is open for students to come talk about things happening in their lives. Participants are able to share their coping strategies and offering encouragement and understanding to other peers. The meeting will take place on Tuesday, November 13th from 6 to 7 p.m. in the Science Building Room D224. If you are unable to make it to this session, another will be held on Monday, December 3rd from 6 to 7 p.m. Foreign-born John Herman's novel of the Midwestern home front during the Great War went unpublished during his lifetime. Beginning in 1925, Herman drafted a searing tale of the paranoia, nationalism, and anti-immigrant sentiment that plagued the M. McLaughlin home front from 1914 to 1918. A presentation is being held at the Portage County Library on Tuesday, November 13th at 6.30 p.m. The presentation will be given by Professor Ross Tangital and will cover Herman's literary style, his new novel, and what it takes to evacuate, edit, design, and market the lost novel of a forgotten writer. For students interested in helping others develop skills in order to be successful at home and work, they can come and learn about becoming a family and consumer sciences teacher or school counselor. Wan Zen Lee has more. UWSP Family and Consumer Science Chat and True Sessions is part of UWSP. There is a critical shortage of FCS teachers, which means a job or two or turn are waiting for you throughout the country. Make a direct impact every day by teaching relationships food participation and nutrition, career exploration, and more. If you want to help others develop skills to be successful at home and work, come to join the FCS Chat and True. You will learn patience, new training, and how to organize. For SPTV News, this is Wan Zhen Li. For more information, contact the UWSP School of Health, Promotion, and Human Development. The next lecture in the Career Exploration Series is almost here. The goal of the series is to have alumni talk about their experiences and how they have applied their degrees and undergraduate knowledge to find the right field for them. Whether you are exploring possible majors, career paths, or just interested in learning more about what comes next, the Career Exploration Series will be exploring many different paths. The next discussion will be in mid-November 
and will be about international careers. Future topics include writing, careers, and data analytics. Diversity College Access is offering multiple support groups for students on campus. A coming out support group will be offered on November 14th at 4 p.m. This group will help support students who are currently in the closet who are considering coming out. There will be a transgender support group on November 20th at 4 p.m. supporting all transgender students. For privacy reasons, please contact the Gender Sexuality Resource Center for a location if you are interested. The UWSP Department of Art and Design will be debuting their annual foundation show next week. This show is to showcase foundation work in the beginning level classes from students in the Art and Design and Interior Architecture programs. The work will be shown in the Ames Jones Gallery in the College of Professional Studies building and will open on 4 p.m. Wednesday, November 14th. The gallery will be open through November 26th. That's all the news stories we have for you today. We'll be right back with sports after the break. Serving a campus of 9,600 strong, we are the home of UWSP Television, we are SPTV. You can find us on Charter Channel 983, online, or on any of our social media sites. Tobacco use is the largest preventable cause of death and disease in the United States. Cigarette smoke kills more than 480,000 Americans each year. 41,000 of these deaths are from exposure to secondhand smoke. Smoking harms nearly every organ in the body. Every day, more than 3,800 kids under the age of 18 smoke their first cigarette. More than 16 million Americans live with a smoking-related disease. On average, smokers die 10 years younger than non-smokers. Smoking causes cancer, heart disease, strokes, lung diseases, diabetes, and chronic bronchitis. UW-Stevens Point is home. It's a university where professors know your name and get you involved in research. They inspire us to realize big dreams. At UW-Stevens Point, sustainability is what we stand for. Our beautiful campus encourages exploration, developing new fields, and problem solving for the real world. It's a great place to launch your career. UW-Stevens Point is home. Apply today at uwsp.edu. Welcome back. The Pointers football team was blown out by fourth-ranked UW Whitewater Saturday, losing 59-7. The Pointers held the Warhawks to seven points in the first quarter, but were down 24 to nothing at halftime. The Pointers got their only score of the game on their first possession of the second half, a 25-yard touchdown pass from Max Herio to Christian Almonte. The Warhawks scored five more touchdowns to get the 59-7 win over the Pointers. Max Herio led the Pointers offense, completing 13 of 25 passes for 166 yards and one touchdown. Herio also led the Pointers in rushing with 21 yards on 15 carries. Christian Almonte once again led the Pointers in receiving with five receptions for 70 yards and one touchdown. They are now 3-6 and six on the season. The Pointers finish their season Saturday when they take on UW River Falls on the road. The fourth-ranked Pointer men's hockey team continued their winning ways over the weekend. On Friday night, the Pointers won 5-2 over Hamlin University. Five different players scored for the Pointers. The five goals were scored by Colin Raver, Austin Kelly, Baxter Cantor, TJ Rue, and Carter Rue. Golden, goaltender Connor Rickman picked up the win, recording 24 saves. The Pointers were back in action the following night against Bethel University. The score was tied at one at the end of the first period, but the Pointers got two goals in the second period to take a 3-2-1 lead heading into the final period. The Pointers scored six goals in the third compared to Bethel's one goal to get the 9-2 win. Goaltender Connor Rickman recorded 13 saves in the win. The Pointers are now 3-0-1 on the season and are now the number one ranked team in the nation. 
The Pointers are back in action this weekend at home when they take on St. Mary's University Friday night and the University of St. Thomas Saturday night. The Pointers women's hockey team opened their home schedule with two losses to 10th ranked St. Thomas. On Friday night, the Pointers lost 2-1. The Tommies got on the board first with a goal late in the first period. The Pointers tied it up at one in the second period with a goal by sophomore Emma Berthroom. However, the Tommies got a goal late in the period to make it 2-1 in favor of St. Thomas. The Tommies held on for the 2-1 win, taking game one of the two-game series. Goaltender Sidney Conley recorded 28 saves in the loss. The Pointers were back in action the following afternoon to try to split the series with the 10th ranked Tommies. The Pointers took the early 1-0 lead midway through the first period with a goal from senior Lauren Smith. However, the Tommies responded back with four goals of their own in the second to take a 4-1 lead into the third and final period. The Tommies scored their fifth goal of the game early in the third period to make it 5-1 in favor of St. Thomas. The Pointers cut that lead down to three goals with a goal by freshman Nicole Neuerberger. However, the Tommies scored one more goal to get the 6-2 win and the series sweep over the Pointers. The Pointers are now 2-2 two two on the season. The Pointers host 7th ranked UW River Falls Saturday in their first conference matchup of the season. The Pointers men's basketball team starts their season Tuesday night on the road against NCAA tournament foe St. Olaf College. These two teams have faced each other in the season opener the past two seasons. The Pointers look to pick up right where they left off from last season where they won the WIAC tournament and reached the third round of the NCAA tournament. The Pointers first home game of the season is November 17th against Brenner Vista University. Intramurals at UWSP are a great way for students to be active, especially with the cold winter months coming up with Block 2 starting last week. Michael Wenjin takes a look at this story. The Intramurals program started Block 2 on October 28th, and it offers students a great opportunity to play recreational sports and do other various activities. We always like to say we have something for everyone. You don't have to be um, the big athlete. Um, to be a part of intramurals, we have you know competitive leagues, non-competitive leagues, you know, and non-competitive would be more for recreation or fun. Um, we do special tournaments. We have, uh, we offer sports and activities, and a lot of the activities are things that, you know that you don't have to be a great athlete to, to do part of that. With colder temperatures now here, it can be tough for students to stay active in the winter. However, if sports aren't what you like, Outdoor Rentals provides equipment for activities in lower temperatures. You have a variety of ways you can get involved. Uh, and stay active throughout the winter. Uh, we also do have outdoor rentals, so you can go hiking, camping, uh, with whatever. We have backpacks, tents, just the basic necessities, snowshoes, and all that good stuff for the winter. We have a lot of that. This semester, Markowitz did Snapchat takeovers during Block 1 on UWSP Snap Stories to engage followers and try to get students involved with what intramurals can offer them. Snapchat takeovers are one of my favorite things to do because it helps me connect with the students in uh, like by the thousands basically, if I check up on the uh, stories when I'm done, I can see that uh, usually like yeah, we're up to like 2,000 people viewed at this point. And they can ask questions whenever they want for whatever I'm showing them, whether, whether it be outdoor rentals or uh, a sport I'm showing that night. And I'm just trying to show how much uh, excitement and like energy there is when we uh, hold whatever sport each night. Uh, officials love doing their work, uh, supervisors enjoy their work as well uh, and the participants are always happy to be here they always have smiles on their faces and that's what I'm trying to show the competitiveness and just how much fun it is because that's really what it's all about is having fun. A social media presence does well in getting people interested but Richmond believes the work put in by student staff really helps make it a fun idea to sign up. What are things that we can offer to make uh, students excited to play, want to be involved, um, want to learn maybe some new sport, um, how can we help them get signed up? How can we get the word out about intramurals and, and how great it is and, and the role it plays in, in the average life of a student on campus? It's never too early to start thinking about participating in a future block. This is Michael Wengen for SBTV Sports. To find out more information or to sign up a team for a future block, visit the intramurals page on the university website. 
That's all the sports stories we have for you today. Up next is Claudia Neve with Entertainment. I'm Joy Hips with SPTV Sports. The Media Studies is a program for people who love to tell stories, whether that be in written form, visual, or audio. Media Studies is exciting because it's always fresh, it's always new. Media is at the center of everything we do. More and more people are asked to engage with media and use media. Our program really provides students with skills and techniques to be better prepared for that in the future. We offer courses in media production, both video and audio, nonfiction and fiction, music production, journalism, film studies. Media Studies is a great way to get hands-on experience in the field that you're looking to do. They teach you the basic concept behind everything and then they tell you to go do it. We really pride ourselves on thinking of a wide set of opportunities that we can give our students. The student organizations are a great asset. We have SPTV, the uh, student television organization, 90FM, the radio, and The Pointer, our student-run newspaper. It's a great way for students to get involved learn skills that they need for class, and meet new people. Some great facilities where our students can hone their skills. There's a giant studio in the center of the comm building. I've had quite a few classes in there. A lot of our classes are very hands-on. They're very interpersonal. You're getting the skills that will allow you to create your future, and I think that's what makes it a truly amazing experience for students. There's an incredible range of options for graduates. We've had students go out and become independent contractors, work for radio stations, newspapers, with TV stations. Everyone is different, and they have their own unique style in all the classes and all the student organizations you get involved in you have a lot of flexibility to really create your own work and do it in a way that means something to you. We're excited to see what students are making and what they want to make and how we can help students get from where they are to where they want to be. I'm in a video production class that's teaching me how to film documentaries. I'm also in a screenwriting class and I get to learn how to write movies so I'm doing all these different cool things and I love it every day. So, right here they have like a sale at the DUC or whatever. Yeah. Some like type of coffee. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Quite on set. We'll be back in ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, take Ben. Live at SPTV, mic check, audio check, news director's adjusting the sound, teleprompter running smoothly, floor director, alert, cameras are rolling, bring in the talent, where's the makeup artist, anchors ready for the news, are you ready to join SPTV? That's a wrap, lights out. Welcome back. The digital media company, Defy Media, is shutting down its operations and laying off its employees. The statement was released on Tuesday the evening. Defy is a parent company of Smosh, and the brand is currently, quote, looking for new home, end quote, according to a statement both by the company and Smosh co-founder Ian Hecox. It is yet to be seen whether or not they will be able to find a new company to work under. SBTV Entertainment will keep you updated on this story. 
The Basement Brew House is hosting the regular jazz night on Monday, November 12th. Jazz is an event full of jazz music and for all students to enjoy. This event happens regularly on the second and fourth Monday of each month. Contact the Basement Brew House if you would like for more information. Video game enthusiasts are hosting a new event, the Pokey Festival, this Saturday. Nathan Wegner has more on this story. The video game enthusiasts of UWSP will be hosting a brand new Pokemon themed event, the Poke Festival, this Saturday, November 10th in the DUC Alumni Room. It's an event where people can get together, play a bunch of Pokemon games together, you know. Everyone that's kind of in that fandom can cherish it together and celebrate their game. While many events the video game enthusiasts have hosted in the past have been geared towards a competitive crowd, they hope to appeal to both casual and competitive players this time. I'd say it's pretty down the middle um, as for being casual or competitive. There's a lot for both types of players to uh, get out of it. It's an event that we wanted to have more fun with and so we have some game shows going and some other more formal tournaments going, but it's really an event we want people to have fun with. This festival will feature tournaments for the traditional Pokemon turn-based game and Pokemon Tournament Deluxe, as well as a trivia show and a Pokemon crime mimicking game. There will also be a raffle and various side events throughout the day. Uh, it's generally quite a wide array of different games and contests. There's even some game show-esque activities to help bring inclusion, such as, you know, with the things from the Pokemon lore, so they can expect it to be Maybe a little loud, but a fun time and with uh, there's lots of prizes, so mostly everyone can expect to go home with something. New this year in VGE is the position of event coordinator, and they had many responsibilities to handle to make Poke Festival a success. Well, I designed the room layout. I designed. I decided uh, what games were going to be played. Um, I guess I, I kind of spend a lot of time brainstorming event ideas, and then I run it by people, and if. Um, the other officers like the ideas, then we go with one of them and uh, put it together. If you're interested in attending this event, the cost will be $8, which will grant you entry to all activities at the event and plenty of food and drink. There will also be a special raffle deal for $10, giving you entry to all events and eight raffle tickets. I hope people, if, if they can, if, whether they come on their own or come with a friend, uh, I hope they have an interest in Pokemon, and if they were brought and didn't, I hope they consider Pokemon more than they did before, because it's it's an old franchise, and it's been with a lot of people their whole lives, so it's a good calming staple uh, for people that partake in video games and many things. VGE hopes to host similar events in the future, featuring different games. They are also looking to begin hosting a larger variety of events. In the spring, I want to put together an event relating to Mario Kart and Smash, hopefully at the same time. Smaller events may start occurring spaced out or in the spring, and we do hold monthly, uh, monthly events and normal club days that are kind of more themed or geared towards something else. I really want to do some kind of charity thing or a donation drive of some sort. I haven't really thought too hard about how that's going to effectively be put together, but I really want to do something with that or just uh, more um, <clears throat> events catering to specific kinds of uh, genres because um, this event may not be for everyone, so I want to make other events that will cater to those people who feel like they aren't getting what they want out of this event. If you would like more information about the event or about the video game enthusiasts, you can find them on Spin, Discord, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you search up VGE of UWSP, that's VGEOF UWSP, that's our Twitter and Instagram um, username, so you'll be able to find us there. Otherwise they can come to our office directly, which is 70K in the DUC. If you're interested in attending club, it's also on the third floor of the DUC, just down the hall from the uh, alumni room in room 374. And that's, it's every Tuesday and Thursday from like 6.45 to 11. It's a come and go as you please club, no mandatory attendance or dues or anything. It's, it's just a safe place for people to find something they're interested in. What I mainly want out of this event is uh, 
I mean, going back to the community thing for everyone to be able to get together and uh, have something to do with each other, um, find a place where they can um, enjoy the games that they enjoy, and especially because it's like uh, a lot of times gaming events and stuff aren't uh, that common compared to like other um, big things people like to do together, like sp I, for example, sports. Sports are pretty huge. You can find that kind of stuff anywhere. Um, but not very many people uh, decide to run events for video games. This is Nathan Wagner with SPTV News. If you'd like to know more about this event, visit VGE on Spin and Discord. The university is hosting its very own comedy night. Seven students will each have the opportunity to perform a 10-minute segment to show off their comedic talent. The best comedian of the night will have an opportunity to open for an upcoming professional comedian at campus. If interested in participating, sign up from the University Information and Tickets desk. The event takes place at the DUC Encore on November 14th. The doors will open at 8.30 p.m. with the event starting at 9 p.m. It is free for UWSP students with an ID and $5 without. That is all the entertainment stories we have for you this week. Coming up is Rachel with Pointer Politics after the break. I'm Claude Neve with SPTV News. Orzala, the seventh largest book printer in North America, is hiring students for the semester. We are 100% employee owned and located right here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. All shifts currently hiring with jobs starting at $10.80 an hour. Hours are flexible. For more information, contact the Orzala HR department. welcoming place even if you don't know what support you need um, just coming down we can look at individual schedules and talk about all the different options that are available I believe that the TLC can definitely help students even for the slightest little bit the writing lab especially because you're gonna have to write papers for any of the classes they're able to proofread those and give you feedback on those. Uh, the writing lab has been around since 1973 and it's the second oldest writing lab in the United States, which is kind of cool. surprised by everything that I learned about TLC because I didn't realize there were so many resources for students. We love to see more students down here. I mean, it's great that we have 35% of the student population utilizing us, but that means that we have 65% that didn't utilize us, and I know we have support services that could benefit just about everybody. to me that I'm able to add another link between the TLC and the students. I know that as a big organization it's kind of hard to get word out to the students, especially because they're not going out and meeting with the students or being part of their classes or anything like that. So having that extra link probably helps them out a lot. And when you come down there's free coffee, tea, and hot cocoa, so make themselves at home and, and learn a little bit about how they can be supported. Pointer Politics. On Friday, November 2nd, Tony Evers and his treasurer, Sarah Godlowski, visited UWSP as one of the last stops on their bus tour. The pair spoke to a crowd of students right outside of the DUC about his policies and about the importance of voting. Evers stressed that he wants to bring science back to Wisconsin, 
so the state can make educated decisions about climate change. He also pointed out the significance of water, saying, quote, it's the most important resource in Wisconsin, unquote. Evers spoke to the importance of the humanities at UWSP and that the humanities creates well-rounded citizens and critical thinkers. Evers is not the first politician to visit the campus. Chelsea Clinton spoke here for her mother, Hillary, in 2016. On November 6th, Evers defeated incumbent Scott Walker in the 2018 midterm election. Evers will take office on January 7th, 2019. On Tuesday, the United States held the midterm elections. Austin Leepak has more about the results. This Tuesday, the United States went through a huge political shakeup when it held the midterm elections deciding the fate of this nation's politics. Representatives, senators, and governors throughout the country were up for re-election, with several seats being swapped. The biggest change this midterm election was in the House of Representatives, with the Democrats having a staggering net gain of 30 seats. This easily earned the Democrats control of the House of Representatives, a hard blow to the current administration's agenda. Meanwhile, in the Senate, the Republican Party had a net gain of two seats, securing their control. In terms of the gubernatorial races, Republicans lost seven states, including Wisconsin and Illinois, while only gaining control of one state. This midterm had an especially high voter turnout due to the current political climate, and asking voters, it was clear to see why. I chose to vote because it's my democratic duty. Uh, it's, a, you know, it's a right and responsibility that we have as American citizens. Um, I'm fairly engaged in politics, um, but I am also an individual who believes like politics makes a difference in my life. And so I think that it's super important that you know students, but just everybody in general, like gets out there and votes and like you know picks their preference because it really does impact their life. Even when confronted by those who say it doesn't matter, they have a response just for them. I say your vote does matter. I mean, the more people who say my vote doesn't matter, it just makes the people who votes vote matter more, right? And so, you know, if we had 100% voter turnout, then everybody's vote would matter the same and everyone would get to choose uh, who it is. But um, every vote does matter. I mean, there have been races all across the nation that have been decided by like 20 votes or 30 votes, which is nuts when you have, you know, you're considering hundreds of thousands of votes. And so, you know, if maybe 40 people who thought their vote didn't matter voted, um, you know, then your vote really does matter more than you think you could be that swing voter. So it's super important. For SBTV, this has been Austin Leepak reminding all of you to get out there and do your duty to vote. For more information on all of the motions, as well as help in preparing for the next election, search online for vote411.org or myvote.wi.gov. And that's all we have for you this week in Pointer Politics. I'm Rachel Ellis. Now back to Erica and Sarah. Thanks, Rachel. That's all we have for you this week in SBTV News. Until next time, Stevens Point, have a great night.